Thank you very much for joining us for tonight's broadcast. I am Gloria Mutesi with the latest headlines for our viewers in Rwanda and around the world. President Paul Kagame today at Village Uruguiro met with Arsenal FC legends Robert Pires and Ray Parler and their families who have been in Rwanda on a five-day visit for Rwanda tour. Residents of Jarama sector in Goma district are happy with the progress made in the implementation of the previous national budget and hope that the next budget will continue to be based on the activities that improve their social well-being. I trust you're doing well. Good evening, and it's my pleasure to bring you the news in detail. President Paul Kagame today at Village, Village Uluguiro met with Arsenal FC legends Robert Pires and Ray Pala and their families who have been in Rwanda on a five-day visit. Prior to this meeting, the two former footballers met with Arsenal fans in Rwanda and they praised the partnership their former club has with Rwanda. Ethan Tashavia begins our coverage tonight. On Wednesday afternoon at Village Rugiro, President Paul Kagame received Arsenal football club legends Robert Pires and Raymond Pala and their families. These two former footballers and their families have been in Rwanda on a five-day visit Rwanda tour where they traverse the country's iconic tourism and culture destinations as part of the tourism promotion partnership between Arsenal and Rwanda, known as Visit Rwanda. Earlier on Wednesday, Pala and Pires met with Arsenal fans in Rwanda, and these two former players praised the impact of the partnership their former club has with Rwanda. Well, certainly the uh, the partnership is very important. Um, you know, tourism is very important in, in in Rwanda. I've witnessed it now because this is my first time in Rwanda, and I've I've had an absolute brilliant time. So I will be spread well spreading the word. I'm sure. Uh, when I get back to England to say what a place, what a great place to go. Um, and and that's, um, a lot of people don't know Rwanda before the partnership come around, if I'm being honest. I, I thought Rwanda, yeah, it's in Africa, but whereabouts, what is it about? But now, you, you know, I'm, I'm sure lots of people uh, know exactly what Rwanda's all about because obviously Arsenal every single week where I visit Rwanda, and with Google now, people will say, well, let's have a look at Rwanda. Well, <laughs> we've never heard of that, that place. And people then look into what Rwanda's all about, and suddenly they, they, they like it. And go, oh, I'd, I'd like to visit here one day. So I think that's the awareness of, of getting the country. Uh, as I said before, it, it's, it's got amazing potential, this country. Uh, what I've seen so far, well, in my short period of time I've been here, uh, the people are fantastic, very, very, so welcome. Uh, I've, I've been to a lot of African countries, and this is probably one of the, up there with the best, to say the welcome we ha we've had. So, yeah, I think it's very important going forward. And hopefully the partnership can stay uh, for many, many years and Rwanda will prosper and get a, a really strong country and a strong population. Uh, and the gorillas, obviously, are very important. They are getting stronger and um, more, pe more people want to see the gorillas as well, which was an amazing experience for, for our, our, our families and ourselves. So, yeah, for me, it's 10 out of 10, this, this country. Fantastic. <laughs> the partnership is like uh, when we talk about the football and the talent, but the players. But now, it's about the, the tourism. So that's why I think yeah, this is, a, for Rwanda, yeah, uh, it, this is a great uh, partnership. This is a great opportunity mm -hmm. um, because Arsenal is uh, a huge, huge mm -hmm. club, not in UK, but around the world. So, um, so now, for uh, if you want to... Uh, if you want to visit Rwanda, yeah, it's more, it's more easier because everybody knows now Rwanda, it's like, uh, it's, uh, it's like Arsenal, it's, it's, yeah, it's, like a, it's like a family. So we talk, uh, Ray talked about uh, the gorilla. Yeah, I think gorilla is very important for, for Rwanda. So, so that's why the, the local people, they, they protect, of course, the, uh, the forest, but uh, the gorilla. So I think tourism with uh, Arsenal, and of course, Rwanda, yeah, it's very, very important here. Yeah. The Rwanda Development Board says the tour of these two former football stars is very crucial in promoting Rwanda's diverse tourism packages. Ariera Kajeruka, the acting chief tourism officer at the Rwanda Development Board, says that they expect more visitors from Arsenal in the coming days as Rwanda continues to open up for visitors post COVID 19 period. Please, uh, in the sense that it uh, shows again that uh, tourism is open. And tourism has been open in Rwanda uh, over one year now since uh, COVID-19, um, since the COVID-19 pandemic. And this goes along uh, as part of our Visit Rwanda and Arsenal partnership. They had a very good experience. They did uh, really uh, explore 
or different parts of the country uh, as a way uh, to, to you know, promote the destination again uh, as a, a diverse destination that uh, has not only wildlife uh, but a vibrant culture and a beautiful scenery and uh, uh, different activities. Uh, this is uh, not the only visit that we're going to host this year. We will have uh, another one and we'll be sharing the, the details uh, in a few uh, weeks to come. French winger Robert Pires played for Arsenal from 2000 to 2006 while his team met an English midfielder Raymond Pala played for Arsenal from 1992 to 2004. Robert Pires won two FA Cups and two Premier League titles with Arsenal Football Club, including the club's unbeaten season of 2003 and 2004. A former French international, Pires earned 79 Cups between 1996 and 2004 for his country, including winning both the 1998 FIFA World Cup and the UEFA Euro 2000. Ray Pala totaled 466 games and 32 goals for Arsenal winning honours including three Premier League titles, four FA Cups and the 1994 UEFA Cup Winners' Cup. He played 10 games for England in 1999 and 2000. Reporting for our TV News, Ethan Teshobia. Residents of Jarama sector in Goma district are happy with the progress made in the implementation of the previous national budget and hope that the next budget will continue to be best on activities that improve their social economic well-being. This was during a launch of the citizen consultations for the 2022-2023 budget. Jane Mutoni now reports. During the national budget consultations for the fiscal year 2022-2023, the mayor of Goma district, Nio Najira Natalie, said that ideas which had been put forward for the previous budget included the Hotel East Gate, irrigation facilities and clean water in the community, feeder and tarmac roads that are being built in Chibungo town. In terms of social well-being, some projects have been achieved and the rest is yet to be achieved as well. There are projects that had been requested by residents of Jarama sector, which haven't been established but still part of the sector's goal plan, such as the two-kilometer water pipeline passing through Ichusa, Ramba and Vunga village, health post in Karenje village, and we promise to fulfill these projects in accordance to our capacity. <laughs> Proposals that were put forward by the people to be included in the budget are mostly related to infrastructure and social welfare development. Our inputs as the residents of Karenje is for actions to be implemented rather than just words. In five cells of Jarama sector, Karenje cell has lacked electricity for over eight years, yet there is electricity in other cells. There is also a school that doesn't have computers, yet they are necessary while learning. The Minister of Local Government, Gatabazi Jean-Marie Vianney, called on the people to work hard for a brighter future. The government has started a process of budget consultations across the country to be considered while drafting the 2022-2023 national budget. A lot is expected to be achieved during this fiscal year as we shall be moving towards 2024. We shall work hard this year and the next so that by the end of 2023 we shall have achieved the pledge which the president promised citizens and more. And we want to see people that have ambitions of being wealthy. In addition to public comments, other ideas that were put in writing for submissions have been submitted to the relevant authorities for analysis and those selected will be included in the budget plan. During this event, partners that have shown outstanding achievements in the development of the people of Jarama sector were recognized. Jane Mutoni, RTV News. The government is calling on the civil society to take part in the fight against gender-based violence. The call was made by the Minister of Gender and Family Promotion, Professor Vaisenge Jeanette, during the closure of a four-year project of fighting against gender-based violence in families, spearheaded by the Rwanda Interfaith Council on Health. Betty Mutoni now reports. <laughs> and Mukama and Donatil, a couple from Kamonyi district have been married for over 21 years. 
but they are to have gone through a lot of misunderstanding and fights in their family, which at some point went as far as soaring to gender-based violence. Most times I would be drunk and I would want everything to be done the way I want it and when otherwise I considered it as disrespect because I expected her to do what I have told her to do. We continued in that life sometimes she would escape and go to her parents and leave me alone. Things would become worse when she is not around. Children ran away to Kigali due to the misunderstanding in family which affected the welfare of our family. After undergoing multiple counseling and support from Rwanda Interfaith Council on Health, the couple's lifestyle started to improve and this, they say, contributed to a development of their family. We worked together in different activities. Our children returned home. We started rearing livestock. Our children would help in feeding them and we played our role as parents. We replaced old roof on our house with the new iron sheets and we renovated the house, although it is not complete. But I thank God for the work done so far. Before we lived in an old house that it was almost crumbling on us, but later we got money and we even bought land. The Rwanda Interfaith Council on Health Rich, in partnership with Oxfam, presented the achievement of FOIA project named Claiming Safe and Reproductive Health Rights in Rwanda. The project, which started from 2017 through 2022, was conducted in six districts with a focus on fighting against gender-based violence. 995 conflicting couples have been engaged in constructive dialogues to rebuild health relationship. 1,000 gender-based violence victims were put in support groups and 2,500 that people will continue to promote sexual and reproductive health rights and spread gender-based violence prevention in the community. The chairperson of Run Interfaith Council on Health, Rich, says that even though this project has come to a close, faith-based institutions will continue to play their role of sensitization in fighting gender-based violence. Gender-based violence is... It wounds the life, it even may kill life. So that's why we stood up to give our contribution in fighting against gender-based uh, violation. The churches work on conscience to make people aware of the evil of uh, this uh, violence and in in uh, collaboration with the uh, authorities and partners, we will be able to achieve, and indeed this project that we are concluding of Oxfam uh, showed that we can uh, get good results. Minister of Gender and Family Promotion noted that the different institutions should play a great role in fighting against gender-based violence. Gender-based cases are still in our country and even increasing, uh, as I said, uh, mainly due to the awareness campaigns, due to the services that are, are brought close to the population. Uh, but w what we can do is uh, uh, to make everyone feel that it's responsible of this, because this is an issue that cannot be solved with one organization, one ministry, but it's something that has to be, to be uh, dealt with everyone. So everyone has a role to play, the media, the civil society organization, the government agencies, the local population, local leaders, so everyone has to come on board. The chairperson of Rana Interfaith Council on Health says that whenever this project reached broad change, mostly in solving domestic violence. He also added that Catholic Church has launched the Family Week, which is also in line with promoting harmony in families and the campaign that will end on Valentine's Day. Betty Mutoni, RTV News. Many thanks, Betty Mutoni, for that report. Now, some of the farmers who harvest rainwater and use it for irrigation in their fields are happy that it has helped them cultivate in all three seasons as well as increase productivity. As Innocent Mugabo reports, a 2013-2014 household survey in Rwanda found that 17.4% of households harvest rainwater. 78 farmers affiliated to Komezi Mihigo Muhinzi Cooperative in Mareba sector, Bujasera district, 
have a 10 hectare irrigation area that uses rainwater to irrigate vegetables and fruits in the three seasons. Residents of the site were given 63 water tanks with a storage capacity of 3,000 liters and two dump sheets holding 250 cubic meters of rainwater, something they say has led to the conservation of wetlands and lakes. We usually have a problem of drought in Bujesere district, but after getting this water, we now cultivate in all seasons, and this has enabled us to change our standards of living. This system of irrigation makes everyone participate since it's not even tiresome. We used to destroy wetlands in search for where there is water. But through these stakeholders of ours, they managed to bring us water leaving out the 20 meters needed to conserve our wetland. With the help of USAID, the Hingaweze project has provided 644 water tanks to help the community of 32,200 people tap rainwater to be used in their chicken rearing activities, as explained by Martha Nyirahabimana of Mayanja sector in Bujasara district. <laughs> During the dry season, with the use of the water we kept in these tanks, it helps us in our poultry rearing business and relieving us from walking long distances to fetch water. When it also gets over, we can easily fill with the tap water. We thank the Hingaweze project for developing us. One thousand two hundred millimeters of rain falls in Randa that scientists find that it is more likely to be used for agriculture if it is well conserved. Statistics from the Randa Water Resources Board, RWB, show that in Randa each person consumes 670 cubic meters per year, while the target is that by 2050 each person will consume 1,700 cubic meters per year. The Director General of the Rwanda Water Resources Board, Prim Mengabonziza, explains that 98% of Rwanda's water resources come from within the country. In a way that, if properly conserved, the country's goals can be easily achieved. Water is a very crucial thing in the development of a country. This electricity we have, most of it comes from water, not forgetting hygiene. Agriculture also depends on water, so without water, nothing can be achieved as Rwanda or the world. So that means we need to collaborate in conserving our water resources. A 2013-2014 household survey in Rwanda found that 17.4% of households tap rainwater. Innocent Bogabo, RTV News. Now, the new Minister of Infrastructure, Dr. Nsabimana Ernest, says that this is a good opportunity to work hand-in-hand hand with the people to achieve the country's infrastructure goals. After he took the oath of office, he was handed over power by his predecessor, Ambassador Clever Gatete, who was appointed as Rwanda's ambassador to the United Nations in New York. The new minister, Dr. Nsabimana, said that more will be achieved on top of what has already been done. Now tonight we also bring you a story of families in Gisenyi sector of Buravu district that have three children with combined disabilities who say that parental love is the driving force that enables them to fulfill their responsibilities of caring for these children, which is otherwise not an easy task. Their desire is for the government to help them care for these children because they lack enough resources. In Gisenyi sector, in Ichibuga village, we visited the home of a 76-year-old Zaga Hutu Fidel. He gave birth to nine children, including three with combined disabilities. The three children share a deaf disability as well as a physical disability that prevents them from moving. One of them is always in a wheelchair and is given all the basics, including being washed and taken to the restroom. It is really not easy. We do everything for him washing him, brushing him, and feeding him. Neighbors of the family also find that caring for these children is a difficult struggle. He tries all he can with the help of some neighbors. If they give him like 500 random francs and there are five, he pays the school fees. This issue is shared among other families in the area who also have children. 
with multiple disabilities. It seems mysterious how one mother can give birth to more than three children with disabilities and yet the other six do not have the disabilities. Professor Lewo Mutesa, a geneticist, explains that in order for a mother to give birth to more than one child with a disability is because of damaged genetic cells between both parents. It would be better that after giving birth to the first disabled child, they would come to the hospital to see if it's not a genetic problem, because the chance of giving birth to a normal child is at 75% plus. Parents who have children with multiple disabilities testify that only parental love has enabled them to take care of them and nurture these children. However, lack of enough resources is a common issue among these families. Non-government organizations find that families with more than one child with a disability deserve special help from the government and not just comforting them. Claudine Furaha is an employee of the Rwanda Association of People with Disabilities and in charge of operations in the Western province, who explains more about this. They need help from the government. They need to be visited. They need to be helped to take care of their children to school and other daily needs. The total number of people with disabilities in Rwanda is estimated at 446. 453. However, there is not a fixed number of families who have more than one child with disabilities so that they can be given the special treatment. So this is where I leave you for tonight. Thank you for the privilege of your time. Have a lovely rest of the week. God bless you and keep you. And until next time, I'm Gloria Mutisi. Bye for now.